Welcome to the Salt Range. Nestled in the north of Punjab, Pakistan, the range extends along the south of the Potoha Plateau and the north of the Jhelum River. A tapestry of life flourishes here, from fertile valleys to rugged summits. In the rugged foothills and valleys, a majestic creature roams. The Punjab Oriel. Its curved horns and tawny coat meld seamlessly with the terrain, a testament to nature's artistry. This is the symbol of adaptability, a resilient dweller of arid lands. Hence extends far beyond their graceful presence. The Punjab Oriel, a keystone species, maintains the delicate balance of life here. nourishing a web of existence that stretches throughout the land. But with beauty comes vulnerability. The shadow of illegal hunting casts a dark cloud over their existence. The government fights a tireless battle to protect these majestic creatures. Illegal hunting and poaching is a worldwide uh, challenge and problem. I mean, uh, wherever you would uh, talk about hunting. So there are two types of, uh, you see, two aspects to this. One is the legal aspect and the ethical aspect. The other is unethical and illegal aspect. A ray of hope emerges, a revolutionary concept. The trophy hunting scheme established in 2007 bridges the gap between conservation and controlled hunting. Trophy hunting is a very novel idea where, uh, especially in the context of Pakistan, where again, a population, uh, you see, poses the threat also, and it is a serious challenge uh, in terms of wildlife conservation. Uh, because, you know, populations, they, uh, they, they, they put a lot of pressure on the wild populations of animals and species. Uh, at the end of the day, it's all about uh, survival. And uh, so, uh, it, it is a concept which was launched and it is an internationally renowned and an accepted and a, a time-tested uh, uh, mechanism by which communities, local people are involved in the conservation and then they are uh, made stakeholders, not only in the conservation and the protection activities, but also they are shared the dividends of that protection and conservation effort. At the heart of this transformation lies a community united by a common purpose. Local villagers, forming a community-based organization, stand as guardians, protecting the legacy of their land. So what we do uh, through trophy hunting is that you are equipped not only in terms of uh, a legal framework which empowers you to take legal action uh, against the poachers, but also the, the proceeds from uh, the trophy hunting enable uh, the uh, CBOs, which is uh, an abbreviation for community-based organization. So the money, uh, the funding stream coming from the trophy hunting provides for salaries for those people who, uh, instead of poaching, they start protecting the species. So they have, uh, as we call them, green jobs. Uh, the trophy hunting uh, money provides uh, for green jobs for the local people, for the poor people, who are given this financial incentive that if you protect this animal and uh, do not uh, uh, poach it or do not uh, let others poach it, so you would be rewarded financially also. Your incomes would be secure. The program becomes sustainable by harvesting uh, very old and mature animals. And that's uh, scientifically proven that when older animals are removed, the younger animals breed effectively and more, uh, you know, uh, 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 in, in a positive way. The tapestry of life in the salt range is not solely woven by the Punjab oil. 
an abundance of avian wonders grace the skies, reminding us of the delicate balance within these ecosystems. In the complex ecosystem of the Salt Range, where the fate of the Punjab Oriel is intertwined with all other life, the entrapment of a pangolin sounded an alarm. The community came together in response. embodying their commitment to preserving this delicate balance. Through their dedicated efforts, the pangolin was freed, echoing the interconnected harmony that is essential for the Punjab Oriel and all other life in the region. From this vantage point, we witness the intricate dance of ecosystems the delicate balance maintained by nature is an intricate tapestry that trophy hunting seeks to restore. And so, the debate unfolds. Can hunting play a role in conservation? Experts weigh in on the complex dance between preservation and progress. It's, it's a struggle and a war between, uh, you know, the good and the bad because you see, poaching is bad, but hunting, ethical hunting, sporting, uh, uh, you know, hunting is, is, is a sport. It's, it's something which has been there since the human civilization. And I was born in a family where my forefathers, my father was a very keen uh, hunting sportsman. And my forefathers, my elders who trained me, uh, they were very known uh, hunting sportsmen in their own times and in their own capacities. Uh, in, in, in our particular area where Padri Reserve and its CBO uh, are established, uh, you could hardly uh, see, uh, uh, you know, in the Hurayal, Punjab Hurayal in 2007-8. It was uh, a rare sight at that point in time. But uh, from 2010 to 2017, the population in our area rose above a thousand. It was remarkable and it was mind-boggling to see the population coming back in such large numbers. The only thing uh, we did was uh, to protect nature. There was hardly any intervention. We only protect, we only protected and conserved the nature. And if you let nature heal, itself, I think it is the best way to, uh, you see, interact and deal with nature. Because you, if you start meddling with uh, uh, nature or the, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the scheme of things that uh, the creator has designed, then you may not get those results. But we, what we did was to simply protect and enable those uh, factors which were critically important for the growth of Punjab Riyadh. It has really worked really well and the numbers have really come back and we've been able to stop the decline and reverse the population of very, very threatened species in Pakistan such as Markpur, such as Ibex, Punjab Rial. As we near the end of our journey, one thing becomes clear. The delicate balance between humanity and nature remains a riddle unsolved. There was another phenomena which badly hit our conservation program in 2017, and that was the uh, shepherds and the uh, livestock that used to come from northern areas uh, into these areas in winters. So what happened in 2017 that uh, an epidemic a disease broke out in our area, which probably killed more than 300 to 400 animals. So that really shook us. Shepherd or these, uh, you know, wandering nomads, uh, you know, their herd uh, consists mainly 500 to 1,000 heads per nomad. So uh, it brought competition, it brought a lot of uh, pressure on uh, grazing, and it drove 
the populations of Punjab Rayal from protected forest to uh, the you know uh, expose them to the communities and the uh, made them vulnerable and it resulted not only uh, excessive killing of those animals but it also resulted into mass deaths of these animals because of the disease In the end, the Soul Train area teaches us that survival has a price. A price paid not just by the Uriel, but by us all. And as the sun sets on this day, the echoes of their existence resonate, reminding us of the choices we make.